and it looks linear. It looks like there's a quite strong linear effect here. And at the analysis of variance does not test that hypothesis that there's a linear trend uh, in the means. And that's a very interesting finding in its own right. So you're stuck now without being able to uh, say that there's a difference between any of the combinations of the difference between the means. Uh, and I could follow that up now with a Tukey's test to show again that, that there isn't any differences. There almost is based on the, the comparison between the low and high group. So I just quickly did Tukey's uh, tests um, that actually um, did not come out for some reason. That I checked Tukey's B by accident, maybe. Uh, postdoc. Yes, I did. OK. Let's just go with the ordinary Tukey. And we can see that the post hocs, these are the Tukey's post hocs. Let's say I ignored the ANOVAs. Or let's say I didn't do an ANOVA and I just went straight to my Tukey's test, which is totally an appropriate thing to do. Uh, I look at my very low to high group. That's the biggest, the most significant effect that I found, but it's still not less than 0 0.05. And so based on the conventional standard of P equal 0 0.05 as our demarcation criterion for statistical significance, I can't reject my null hypothesis. So I'm stuck this way too. I can't say. I can't say anything about this, what looks to be a really clear trend in the means. So how do I test the linear contrast analysis? Here, this is how you do it. Uh, you go into compare means. Actually, this is one way to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it three different ways, because you get three different pieces of information, all of which are valuable. Go into contrasts. Click on po polynomial. And degree, linear, that's what I expect there to be, a linear. But you could also test for a quadratic effect or a cubic, cubic effect. I'm not going to talk about these today. I'm going to do separate videos on those. Today, I'm only interested in linear effect. Polynomial is something that you'll probably, is, is the default in this option. And it's probably always the case that it's going to be accurate, you know, probably in 95% of cases. Uh, and a polynomial just means that the differences between your means, uh, differences between your groups are roughly comparable. So the amount of exposure, let's say there's two minutes extra exposure to formulas for the low group, and then the moderate group got an extra two minutes, and then the high group got an extra two minutes. So something like that. So where there's a rough, rough co correspondence among the, between the differences in your levels uh, within your independent variable. So that's all I have to check to get the trend analysis or the linear contrast analysis uh, as a minimum. And this is what SPSS is going to give me. It gives me all the same information, same means and standard deviations, and that homogeneity of variance test, which I haven't really talked about yet, but I'm going to. Uh, here is the, it gives us three um, F values. The first F in the new table is actually the old F from the old analysis. 2.504 is the same F value I got originally in that first ANOVA I did. 2.504 with significance 0 0.071. So SPSS gives it again. But more importantly, it gives us the linear term contrast, which has an F of 7.197, uh, degrees of freedom of 1 and 44, with a statistically significant effect, p less than 0 0.05. In fact, p is equal to 0 0.01. So that's you know, very significant. It's, it's uh, much more significant than the um, than ordinary analysis of variance. So I can uh, reject the null hypothesis of no trend in the means uh, across levels. So that's a statistically significant effect. It's meaningful. It's supporting a theory that as you expose students to formulas more and more, they become arguably more anxious. I didn't have a measure of anxiety, but I could have had one. And that's the assumption here, that they're getting more anxious, and their, their, their performance is deteriorating as a consequence because they're not paying attention to the actual testable material, even though they're told that they're not going to be tested on the, on the formulas. OK, so um, so far, that's good, and that's informative, and that's the crux of the analysis there. But I've rejected my homogeneity of variance assumption. So can I trust this p-value? No, I can't. Uh, so how do I get an adjusted linear contrast analysis in SPSS uh, that takes into account the fact that there's a homogeneity of variance violation? Well, that's a little bit more work, but it's not insurmountable. Go into Analyze, Compare Means, One-Way ANOVA, Contrast, 
And now you actually have to specify to SPSS uh, the coefficients for the linear analysis.